Hello, chart watchers and Decision Point faithful. Welcome to this special episode of the Decision Point show. I'm, my name is Erin Swenlin and I am with decisionpoint.com. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about, it's all on the chart. And I'm gonna specifically be talking about the components that you probably will wanna include in your analysis to put on your chart. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about using the different time frame charts once you have all those components. Then we will look at the selection and emphasis process uh, using, again, all of those items that are on the chart. And then finally, I'm gonna finish with how you can use uh, these charts and the same indicators for your entries and exits. So really everything can be on that chart and it doesn't, you need to keep it simple. You need to have each of these particular components on your charts. Somehow you need to be looking at it, uh, each of these components so that you get the whole picture and you can keep it simple. You don't need to have about you know, 10, 20 different windows with different indicators. I mean, I know we do that with some of our charts on Decision Point, but in general, when you're just looking at a stock or an index and you're trying to figure out where it's gonna go or what trades you wanna make, there are certain components that you just absolutely need to have. So what are they? First is price, of course. You, you know, we're pulling up a price chart. Uh, that's what we're, we're talking about today, not a particular indicator chart, if you will. We wanna know the trend and the condition of that particular stock or investment you're interested in. You need to know what the momentum is. Is it shifting to the upside? Is it shifting to the downside? Is it flat? What's going on with momentum? And then you of course need to have volume on the chart so that you can see the participation or the um, force, if you will, behind whatever moves you're seeing on that price chart. And then one or two things that people don't necessarily think about is relative strength. How does this stock you know, shape up amongst all of its peers, all of the large cap stocks, for example? You wanna know how it's lining up as far as strength relative to all of the other stocks in its universe. And part of this is also determining the internal strength. So once you know the internal strength of your stock, it'll give you a point of reference to figure out that relative strength. And guess what? I have all of these components on my chart and you can have all of these components on your chart. Maybe you will choose to use the indicators I use, or maybe you'll decide to use something you're a little bit more familiar with. But I'm gonna show you each of the components on my charts. And so you'll see every one of these on this chart. So let's go ahead and we're gonna start with, again, this is all on the chart. So what was the first thing? Price. Well, obviously I have price on here. I prefer to use an OHLC bar on my daily, weekly, and monthly charts rather than candlesticks. Um, for those of you who are or are not familiar with candlesticks, candlestick patterns are very, very short term. They usually tell you what's gonna happen the next day. They don't generally tell you what's gonna happen over time on candlesticks. So for me, I wanna see those OHLC bars on my daily, weekly, and monthly charts. So how do all of these components fit in there? Well, the first thing we wanted was uh, you want to know what the price is. Like I said, we know that. You want to know the trend. So that's where your EMAs or your simple moving averages come in. I have four of them on my chart. A five day, a 20 day EMA, a 50 day and the 200 day. And many people ask me, well, why do you use an exponential moving average rather than a simple moving average? And the reason is uh, simple moving averages, of course, weight all the data the same. You just take all of the components of that particular um, average that you want, for example, price. So you look at the price over time and then you average it all into your simple moving average. With the exponential moving average, it puts more weight on the near-term data. And so for me and, and Decision Point, we like to have that EMA because for us, when we're making decisions on what the market's gonna be doing moving forward or what a stock is going to be doing moving forward, we wanna see what those averages look like 
with an emphasis on that near-term data. So that is why we use those particular EMAs. I use a five-day EMA at 20, 50, 200, as I said. And the reason being is our DP trend models are based off of these particular crossovers on these moving averages in the 50, like I said, we look at the 20, 50, 50, 200 crossovers. And we actually do track on our indexes, the five and 20 day EMA crossovers. So the crossovers will give you and uh, let you know what's going on with the stock. For example, the 50 day EMA crossed above the 200 here. So back here, while that 50 was below the 200, it had a bearish bias. And so when it has a bearish bias, we try not to think uh, bullish expectations. Because if you've got a, a stock that's in a bearish configuration, typically, and obviously this one came out of the bear market low and did just fine, but typically you're gonna find that stocks don't react the way you would expect them to, even based on all of your indicators, simply because that 50 day EMA is so far below the 200 day EMA. So these crossovers, the golden cross, and the death cross, as they are called, uh, those determine our long-term trend model signals. So for example, here, 50 cross the 200, nice golden cross, as we like to say. And that gave us a buy signal for the longer term. The 20 and 50 day EMAs, I can watch those crossovers. And we consider the positive crossover of a 20 and a 50 day EMA to be a silver cross. And so when we get those positive crossovers of the 20 and 50, that's an intermediate term trend model buy signal. Five and 20 day EMA crossovers is your short term trend model. So uh, you have to know the price, but you need to know the trends and the moving averages are your best bet to understand price trends and also give you these signals for the DP trend models. Um, next thing that you wanna have on your chart, uh, obviously volume. You wanna be able to see the daily volume. Like I said, you wanna know what kind of um, you know, uh, force or participation is happening with a particular price move. So for example, you can see a huge bar to the upside here as price pushed higher. More than likely this was on earnings, but it does tell you that there's interest that you've got that push to the upside and you can start expecting because of that participation, higher prices. That's your uh, what you wanna consider. Here's another bar, this was a negative volume. And of course uh, that told you the participation in this down move was quite substantial and it continued through the bear market as we went lower and lower. The next thing you really wanna have on your, uh, well, we talked about volume, let's move over to the OBV which is your cumulative volume. This gives you your volume trends. You know, here we have a moving average, so we know whether it's above or below average as far as a daily version, but cumulative volume helps you to determine the volume trend itself. And again, trends are very important in your stock selection. So your cumulative volume, I use the OBV on balance volume. It's a very simple concept. Uh, it reacts very similarly to your accumulation distribution lines, uh, all of those. And I like this because it's so simple. If you have an up day, all of that volume is added to your OBV line. Anytime you have a great deal of volume to the downside or any volume to the downside, any day where the market closes lower, you take all of that volume and you subtract it from your OBV line. So you can see as we had all of this volume coming into the negative side, you can see how the trend on the OBV was trending lower. But what you wanna watch for are, are those uh, things with the cumulative volume that uh, give you those hints, uh, those confirmations or those negative divergences. So that's one of the reasons I include cumulative volume on my chart. So I get my daily volume, I get my cumulative volume, so I know what's going on as far as participation uh, in a particular move. The next thing that I like to have is, of course, we talked about price, we talked about price trend, but we really need to know the condition 
the price. We need to know, is it overbought or is it oversold? Overbought, of course, being on the top, oversold being on the bottom. And so I use the relative strength index, the RSI. Now don't get confused by the name RSI because it does include relative strength as part of it. And typically relative strength means that you're looking at a stock versus another stock or an index to see if it's relatively stronger than the other. The RSI is not about that. It's relative strength of your price. It's telling you over the past 14 days, where is price in that price range? And so what you wanna see is a positive number here on that RSI. You wanna know that it's in that top of its range and it's staying positive, which means that you, ha you haven't lost a lot of uh, price. Um, you know, you're not, by having your price range stay in that same area, you know you haven't had a lot of technical damage there. You can see right here with this decline, a lot of technical damage, and now you're below what we call net neutral 50, you're oversold. Uh, so you wanna watch that. That's when you don't wanna be in typically is when your RSI is falling. And you can see how that can be the case, uh, you know, as far as looking at where this RSI tends to get overbought and then that's when price will go down. And when you have these oversold conditions, of course, this was at the end of the bear market. So these were conditions that held for, for many, many weeks. But you can see that once we came out of it, that was when we started to get that move on the RSI. And you can see right here, it stayed above and that coincided with this beautiful rally right here. So really wanna know price condition, are we overbought or oversold? The other thing on this chart that's important is of course momentum. A lot of people measure momentum differently on their charts, but I have to say, most of the technicians I've met, most of my readers and subscribers, they all have a momentum component on their charts. It's just a matter of what momentum component you wanna use. We at Decision Point use the price momentum oscillator and it works very, it looks very similar to the MACD and to the PPO. And the big difference is of course, the calculation is slightly different. And we came up with this momentum oscillator years and years ago. Um, Carl came up with the idea for it. I helped him a little bit with the math and here we are. We have this beautiful momentum indicator. It reacts slightly differently, as I said, from the MACD and the PPO, but we find it to be um, a better measure of momentum than those, but that's just our preference. And so what you look for, of course, with price momentum, you wanna know is the momentum slipping, which tells you you're probably gonna to continue to slip, is the momentum increasing? And that tells you that behind price, there is that force. And so you're expecting the move to continue in the positive direction because momentum is still moving positive here. The other thing you watch for momentum, of course, are those signals where you get the crossover. So for example, back here, we had a sell signal. We ended up with price moving mostly sideways. And then we got the buy signal, of course, on that big move up continued. You still had that follow through on that move, but then you could see momentum starting to wane. And then we got another sell signal back in here. And again, then the price continued lower. And you can see that we didn't get another buy signal here until November in the middle here, the beginning of November. So all during this time, while momentum was flattening and moving towards zero, price was just not doing much of anything. So price made the, the flip and momentum shifted to the upside. And that is where I like to look for my investments. I don't always wait until the PMO has had that buy signal. I like to just see that moment, momentum is shifting upward. That might get me into whatever upside move that we're seeing early. Uh, I can also point out on the OBV here in this thumbnail that you have these bottoms right here and they were moving downward. And what was happening with volume during this period of time? Well, you can see a huge up volume bar. You can see the, the high um, down volume bar. But what was this telling us here when we looked at cumulative volume? These two bottoms are about flat, but ultimately if you make the measurement, they are rising slightly. And you have 
the bottoms here on price declining sharply. So that's a hint that when you do get that rally, volume's gonna probably be behind this move. And sure enough, the move started upward, the rally continued, and you can see that we're still getting the upward price momentum. We have an RSI that's in the positive position. So even though I have a chart here where you have a 1% decline, we still have not seen technical damage on the chart. So the last piece that I need to include, and I know I've spent a lot of time on this chart, but I think these concepts are very, very important. So the final piece is relative and internal strength. Now you could use two different indicators if you wish for relative strength and internal strength. But the stock charts technical rank that John Murphy came up with, I think is really your best uh, measurement of relative and internal strength. And how do I mean this? How can it be both? Okay, well, let's, let's look at the internal strength part first. So the calculation for the stock charts technical rank, it takes into account uh, intermediate and long-term price trends and momentum, and it folds those all into a score, if you will. So all of that is normalized, you get a score. Now that tells you the internal strength. Is that, is that score high or is that score low? So that tells you internal strength. But the best part of the stock charts technical rank is it then compares that ranking or that strength, that internal strength, that number, and it compares it across the entire universe of whatever stock this in, is involved in. So in this case, it's a mid cap stock. We know that from here. And we know that we have a scooter of 86.5. So that tells me that not only does it have high internal strength, comparatively across all of the mid caps, it tells me that it has a very high uh, relative strength number here. Because here's the line that I like to draw. That line is at 75. Uh, Greg Schnell uh, came up with this and I followed on top of it because I thought it was an excellent uh, indicator. But you use the 75 range here, you wanna see that scooter above 75. And why, why is that? Because you want your chart, you want your stock to be, <clears throat> excuse me, you want that stock to be in the upper first quartile of its universe. So if it is above 75, that means relative strength wise, it's in the top 25% um, of all stocks in that universe. And so that's what you wanna be involved in, right? You want a stock that is internally strong and relatively strong. And so using the stock charts technical ranking here, the scooter is an excellent way to measure your relative internal strength. So I have all of my components. I have all of them on this chart. I don't have a million windows going down with a bunch of different indicators. I don't have a ton of overlays. I just use my moving averages. And then I of course have where is price relative to its price range over the past two weeks. Is it overbought or is it oversold? <clears throat> so now you know all of the components that go on these charts. So let's talk a little bit more now that we know what we're looking at, which charts do you follow? Which indicators do you use? Uh, well, let's start off with the charts you wanna follow. Long-term investing, of course, you want those monthly to weekly charts, to daily charts. So you wanna know what's going on in all three of those time frames if you're looking at a long-term investment, but you're going to put your emphasis on what's happening on the monthly chart. These are gonna be your confirmation charts. Now, if you're into intermediate term investing, like many of us are, I am primarily an intermediate term investor, although I've become more of a short term investor doing the decision point diamonds where I come up with 15 stock picks per week. And so as part of that, I find that I'm getting some great picks from it. And so now I'm starting to get involved in the market in the shorter term, more so than before. But when I was intermediate, when I do have my intermediate term horizon accounts, what I want to do <clears throat> is look at weekly and daily charts, but I want to put the emphasis on the weekly chart. I really want to know uh, the components on that chart and what they're doing. 
For the short-term trading, as I was talking about, your emphasis is gonna be on the daily charts, but you will probably use minute charts to help confirm what's going on on the daily chart. For me, I spend more time on the daily chart for my short-term trading, and I go down to those minute charts. I have it as day trading. I go down to the minute charts for my entries and exits. And that's what we'll look at as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So selection and emphasis. So using all of those chart components and scanning using those chart components, as I do with my diamond scans, I can put different emphasis on the scans using those same chart components. So for example, if I want a momentum trade, what do I need to be sure is in my scan? Well, my momentum component, the price momentum oscillator. So I need to make sure that the PMO is in the scan and that what its, its importance is, is showing me that momentum is shifting. And so I have a scan that's basically looking at momentum trades. That's my diamond scan. It's looking at a lot of trades that you've gotten the shift in momentum. You haven't gotten the buy signal yet, but you see that moment, <clears throat> momentum gathering and building. And so that's when you wanna get in that trade. Uh, middle of the road stocks. So sometimes I don't find the perfect trades uh, coming in as when that uh, PMO, that momentum is shifting upward. A lot of times some of those other indicators don't look that great. So what I do is I scan for what I call middle of the road stocks. So I'm looking for stocks that maybe don't have a scooter in that upper quartile. I'm looking at stocks that maybe don't have those exponential moving averages lined up in the with the 50 above the 200, for example. Um, in the middle of the road stocks, I have a 50 day EMA that's above the 200 in my scan, but the rest of it, I kind of uh, loosen up, if you will, on the momentum and on the other parts of that scan. I have one that's momentum sleepers. And this is showing me not only that we have momentum there, we have momentum under the surface building. And how do I do that? I just um, make my PMO a little faster in the scans, and then that will come up with some of these uh, stocks that maybe are ready to make that big break to the upside. There's bottom fishing scans, right? So I, if I wanna have a bottom fish, Where's my emphasis? Well, my emphasis is gonna be on that 50 day EMA being below the 200 day EMA. That's, that's a bottom fish. So I use that as part of that scan. And then of course you can use the same indicators to come up with shorts. And I have the diamond scan, which is basically my uh, momentum trade. And then I have the exact opposite in my scan language, exactly opposite. And that's where I come up with my shorts. So shorts, I don't necessarily short that much uh, in the bear market. I was certainly um, playing shorts a bit more than I normally would, but typically I don't play shorts. Uh, it, it's a simple concept that uh, to the upside, if you're playing long, there's, there's really technically no limit to how high it can go. If you're playing a short, obviously your limit you know, you're, you know your stock more than likely isn't going to go down to zero, but that limits the range that you have to make money on the downside. And so that's one of the reasons I just choose to not do shorts because I feel like I have a better shot at higher percentage gains moving things to the upside. So entries and exits, again, the same things on that chart you can use. It's the same indicators. I use the same indicators on my short-term charts for my entries and exits. You use the same thresholds. Is the PMO turning higher? Is it on a buy signal? Is the RSI above 50? And I use minute charts for my entries and exits. So that will really help you get in. You see the candlesticks you have a much better sense of where that stock is going in the very short term of that day and the few days prior. So it'll tell you where your entries and exits should be. I use a five minute candlestick for my entries. And then I often will use that five minute candlestick for my exits, but I think using a 15 and 30 minute candlestick charts for exits is also uh, very useful.
I just don't find that using the 15 and 30 minute charts as helpful as a five minute chart for an entry. All right, so let's go look at an example. We have a few minutes here left. So I'm going to pull up, uh, let's see, I have it in my chart list right here and my diamonds chart list. So we're gonna look at, that was the one we looked at where it was all on the chart, correct? And now we're gonna look at an example here. So here's the monthly chart for Compugen, C-G-E-N. And you can see as far as the monthly chart goes, obviously a really nice move coming out of 2019. And we had a serious pullback. Uh, I would suspect that uh, was a lot of that was due to uh, the possible uh, bear market and bear market lows, but actually we're seeing that pullback a little bit uh, later in the game. But you can see momentum is still shifting upward, which I like. Uh, you can also include the RSI on this chart, and it'll give you an idea over the long term how price is lining up. And that's how you can add it right there. And there you go. So we can see price got very, very overbought. And so we ended up with this pullback, but we're now back in positive territory. We still have momentum uh, moving to the upside. It is decelerating somewhat, but that makes sense with this very large pullback that we saw just recently in the past few months. So, you know, long term, it still looks pretty good. So, what are we looking at on a weekly chart? All right, definitely not an intermediate term investment, is it? You've got an RSI that's negative. You have a PMO on a sell signal. It's moving lower on balance volume. You can see those declining tops and declining tops on price. So it's confirming the downtrend in the intermediate term. So probably not the best investment in the intermediate term. But I did pull this one out of a scan. So I know that the daily chart looks very enticing. And it's certainly something that I would consider as a diamond. There are a few problems here and I will move and, and show you those. I also do not have a scooter for this particular stock, but I'll show you one that does. In any case, I look at my double bottom here. I can see price moving and going toward that confirmation, but the RSI is negative. So it's not a perfect setup. The PMO gave us a buy signal. Moving averages. Uh, price hasn't gotten above that 20 day EMA, that's a problem. If you look at support levels and resistance levels, you can see the $14 is a pretty stiff resistant, resistance level and price hasn't gotten above that 20 day EMA. So this one, you know, it might have some setup here, but it's not prime. It's not the, the best setup you can have. And then finally, let's look at noodles and company. And again, here you've got a very positive chart. In this case, everything is lined up except for that scooter. And again, I like to see them over 75, but that's not a critical component as far as my decisions for trading. So for trading, this one looks much better. The trends are going the right way. You've also got price above those trends, positive RSI. And quickly, we'll look at the weekly chart and we'll shut this down. Weekly chart though, ugly, right? So not the best intermediate term investment. Monthly chart, looking good. You know, we've had flat, flat price, but you can see we're on a buy signal in the longer term. We're near the lows of the price range. So it's probably set up very well for you. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, special edition of the Decision Point Show. It's all on the chart. And go on and look at your charts and make sure all of those components are all on your chart. Happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.